Last week was not a better week for quality at Cabo Books. In fact, I would say that's the worst week we've had since we started this program. But this week, they came back with a bag. We've got a ton of indie comic books. we got some DC stuff to talk about, a little bit of Marvel to talk about. And with us, as always, is Drew from Comic Book Elite. How you doing, Drew? I am doing great, Wes. Uh, let's talk about some comic books. I'm ready for this. I'm psyched. I do want to say this. If you're a fan of Born of Blood number one, and you've been wondering what's going to happen with Born of Blood number two, you're going to have to wait to the end of the video because Drew has some information for you. Yes. Yes. Stay tuned. <laughs> let's get into the best of the week. First, we're going to start with Indie Comics, not shocking. Sumerian Hour of the Dragon, number three from Ablaze. Julian Blondell adapting a Robert E. Howard story. Valentine Setcher on art. Once again, the art is simply immaculate. That's the only way that you can really describe it. It's a perfect adaptation of the Hour of the Dragon story from Robert E. Howard. Really cool stuff going on here. We get some interesting play with with uh, with Conan here. He gets put in some very bad situations, and it's just the art, man. It's the art that really blows your hair back. Every story of a, the of the Sumerian has been a different art team, but this one by far has been the best. These bad guys, you know, who who kicked out Conan, they're this uh, relationship they're in with this uh, powerful sorcerer. All of a sudden, they're not happy with it, and things have changed. So both parties know Conan and these guys, they got to get this guy's heart, you know, to take him out. It is so fun. And we get a little uh, interesting backstory to Conan about he who went by a pseudonym, in case you didn't know this. Amra is, is, a, is a pseudonym he went under, you know, when he was uh, pillaging and everything back in the day. But yeah, this is a very fun read with terrific, mind-blowing art. You got to check this out. Yeah, they tried it to us, old switcheroody on that uh, wizard guy, and he decided to raise the dead. So that was a bad idea. Not going to work out well for anyone, but Conan, if, if you ask me. Yeah, I, I love how it ended at the, at the very end. You know, he's going back. He, it's His back's against the wall. He's pissed. I don't want to face Conan when he's pissed. It's not going to happen. <laughs> absolutely not. But if you are a fan of Conan, these Sumerian comics from Ablaze are absolutely perfect. These are the best adaptations you are going to find of the Conan material. There's been some really cool stuff from Dark Horse. There's been some really cool stuff from Marvel in the past. This is simply the best. You're not going to find anything better, in my opinion. And we're going to talk about another code in comic book a little bit later, but this one is better. Let's talk about one of my other big recommendations. I've been talking it since the original series, The Killwalk, The Artisan Wraith, number three. This is the sequel from Livio Ramondelli from IDW. We get a lot more information about the Wraith class robots, which are pretty much indestructible, and they would go through worlds and kind of cleanse them and whatnot. Very interesting stuff, and we really... The thing that Raymond Deli has done better than I could have expected is introducing these two new robots into the story and really letting them shine up against some of the older characters as well. It's just, just really captivating stuff in the, the art. I mean, I don't think anyone does robot illustrations and comic books better than Livio. That is very true. You know, and I'm, I'm very glad you turned me on to the series because I, I wasn't a big fan of the issue one of this, but I went back and reread these. I flip and love this series. This is this is terrific. He's able to convey human emotions to these robots like he's able to convey fear power strength just uh everything which is phenomenal and i honestly i believe i called this you know you may disagree with this but this is the transformers comic we all deserve right now this is how you do it right uh, i love the way the story is going the dialogue the pacing the art everything is top notch in this it is terrific he's at the top of his game here this is my front runner for comic book of the year i think it's even better than the sumerian overall but i'm more of a uh, am I more of a sci-fi guy? I'm a sci-fi and a fantasy guy. I love them both, but I really like the kill lock. It's just one of those things I discovered a couple of years ago, and it's just brilliant. My last recommendation on the indie comics, you knew this one was coming. Nottingham, number seven, Mad Cave, David Hazan, Shane Connery, Volk on art. Hazan has taken the, the series in a new direction. We've got the sheriff of Nottingham and Robin and his merry men kind of going off to see, save King Richard. And then back at home, we've got Maid Marion doing some really, really shady stuff back at the home front. And we got two really cool stories. The alliance between the Sheriff, sheriff of Nottingham and Robin Hood and his merry men is as uh, tenuous as ever because there's a murder that happens. And you can see things are about to break apart at any moment. Absolutely. Like I said, there's a new element brought into the, the, the ship that they're on. And really, I mean, by the end of it, can we trust this character? When we see her origins, who she's studied under who she's uh, teamed up with in the past. It's like, I don't, I don't think this is going to go well for anyone by the end of the story. It's so unpredictable because I don't know what's going to happen next. That's what's fun about this. 
And I really hope they can keep this A-level, you know, storytelling up. And the art in this is phenomenal. I, I love this artist. He reminds me of Sean Gordon Murphy in a way, just his art style. And I, I love it. The story is so much fun, so unpredictable. That's the best type of storytelling you can get. Yeah, Nottingham number seven. So much fun. If you like the Robin Hood type mythology, but you want it with a little twist, this is the Cobb book for you. Now let's get into your recommendations. I'm going to be honest. I haven't even heard of this publisher, let alone the Cobb book, but you're recommending Frank Frazetta's Death Dealer number one from Opus Comics. Mitch Iverson and Stefano Martino. What the hell's going on here? I, this one just passed me by. I didn't even know it was coming out. Yeah, neither did we. Well, I, I neither did I for the most part. Like, I think when we looked this up, uh, we had thought like it was just going to be a bunch of like, covers, a bunch of cover imagery from Frank Frazetta. And Frank, if you don't know Frank Frazetta, he is a legit legend, you know, one of the greatest creators, illustrators on the planet. And uh, when we were shocked, we opened this up. We're like, oh, no, it's actually a legit story with his character, the Death Dealer, that he he did this back in the in the 90s, I believe. The interior art by Stefano Martino is gorgeous. And it deals with the death dealer named Kerr. And he saves a sexy redheaded sorceress and her child from a pack of wolves and an impending snowstorm. And then it gets crazy, wild, and sexual and violent after that. I'm going to say, if you have any soy in your heart or any of your friends' hearts, this is the cure to the soyness. I mean, the only way that could make this reading experience better is if I had a Guinness and a prime rib medium rare reading this. It is, this is awesome. This is what you want, you know, from a, from storytelling. If you like the Sumerian, this is the Sumerian on crack. It, it is beautiful and horrifying, gorgeous. Yeah, Frank Frazetta's Death Dealer, number one. One of the weird things going on in comic books is a lot of the, the old school comics that people would have grown up on, we just don't have a lot of good versions of them right now. You know, there isn't a good Transformers comic right now, and there really hasn't been a good G.I. Joe comic book until this latest iteration, G.I. Joe Saturday Morning Adventures. We got the third issue from IDW this week, Eric Burnham, Dan Schoding. If you like the cartoons and you really like G.I. Joe, this is the G.I. Joe comic book for you. Absolutely. And like you said, it's one of those comics you can read with your with your kids. You know, they're, they'll get a kick out of this. I guarantee it. It's just continuing the story with uh, Cobra Commander and the genie. And uh, the Cobra Commander asking for a wish a certain way. The genie, he takes it another way. He's like, actually, this is what you said. It, with leading up to the next issue, we're going to get a full-on fight between the Joes and Cobra. It's going to be amazing. And in this, we get uh, Storm Shadow versus uh, Snake Eyes in this. It is beautiful. And by the end of this, of course, we get a great lesson at the end. You know, the more you know. And it is, it, this is just so much fun, uh, fun for all ages. Yeah, Saturday Morning Adventures, G.I. Joe, Real American Hero number three. You got to check this out. Let's move over to Marvel Comics. They have a couple of uh, comic books we think that you should be checking out. Not the biggest fan of Jason Aaron, but his work with some more, some of the more violent characters out there, Punisher and, and Conan, are actually pretty good. This week, I'm recommending King Conan number four, Jason Aaron, Mahmoud Aswar on art. Mahmoud Aswar really has a great style for a Conan for a fantasy type setting. It absolutely works here. We got a good, interesting story. This is one of the better things that Marvel's putting out right now. We also kind of get a peek into the uh, the origin of Conan, which you don't of, often get from Marvel Comics. No, you don't. And on, to be honest with you, Wes, I I skipped this this issue this week. What I did the hell not. Were you thinking? Hey, hey, we have the Sumerian coming out. Yeah, Death Dealer. It's like, why do I need Jason Aaron and his soyness? You know, because after what he did with the with um, Pocahontas, I think. You know what, Jason Aaron, that strikes one, two, and three for me. I, I, I do not want to read this, but apparently I may want to check this out. So I may check it out now because of your recommendation. There's only like nine comic books from Marvel that are worth checking out in a month. This is one of them. So, hey, if you're going to read all the crap that Marvel Comics is putting out right now, you should at least <laughs> check out King Coda number four because it's one of the few things that's actually pretty good. And like I said, you do get some flashbacks into Conan's origin story and, and kind of uh, some of the dealings between him and his father. All right, so I'm actually going down to our brick and mortar store here in a little bit after we're done recording. So I'll probably I'm going to pick that up this week and uh, down there and yeah, I'll give it a read and see what I think. I have a feeling you're going to like it. It's not the Sumerian. Let's be honest. This is a Marvel <laughs> version of of Conan, but it's better than most of what they're putting out right now. Now, speaking of the other comic book that Marvel put out this week, that's actually worth your time. Hulk versus Thor: Bader of War Alpha Number One. Donnie Cates, Martin Kokolo. This isn't the greatest comic book in the world. I don't want people's expectations to be be too high. But if you want a fun comic book with a badass fight, and it's a big-ass fight, 
yeah. this is the comic book for you. It's just kind of fun. Yeah. This is exactly it. And this is, you know, this is, I really see, I, look, I read the comments and there's a lot of people who do, who really don't care for uh, Donny Cates's Hulk run, but the way I see it, I mean, is there not a lot of substance there? That is true. But is it fun? Absolutely. It is just, if you're a seven to eight year old kid, like we, which we all were at one point, you're going to love this comic. You get the full on fight between Thor and Hulk in this, which is amazing. It gets gory. It gets nasty. And there's also we get caught up on Hulk and Thor with their latest shenanigans in, at the beginning of this. And there's something told at the very it's very interesting at the very beginning, at the beginning with this, with Hulk and Banner to how the contraption he's working. I hadn't thought of it you know, before. It's like, oh, there's another element tossed into here. I hadn't considered. I wonder who this could, could have been. But uh, yeah, this was just well paced, action packed, uh, well illustrated. It's just damn good fun. You got to check this out. It is everything that, that Donnie Cates has said it was going to be. If you expect more, you're going to be disappointed. But if you expect what he told, sold you the, the book on, you'll be very happy. Now let's go to our lone DC comic recommendation. And I was on the I was on the edge on this one. I'm going to recommend it. Jurassic League number one, Daniel Warren Johnson, Juan Gideon. I expected a lot more out of this comic book, to be honest. Daniel Warren Johnson on a dinosaur theme, Justice League, sounded like a lot of fun. It sounded like he would probably take some of his weird, zany uh, kind of a uh, storytelling style and kind of infuse it into this really weird story. I don't think we really got that so much. I mean, the Superman dinosaur is Superman. The Batman dinosaur is Batman. And there's nothing really unique that comes along with like the type of dinosaur they are or anything like that. But it is a pretty fun, pretty good Justice League story. And the art from Juan Gideon is very good. So if you were expecting something truly remarkable about this i don't think you're going to get that but if you want the justice league but they look like dinosaurs and it's something you can enjoy with your kids i think you'll like this you are you just hit the nail on the head this is something you can enjoy with your kids it's like but if you have a kid who's like seven to eight years old you know i guarantee you they'll enjoy this because there's a lot of action in this it does get kind of violent at some points with the uh, the joker dinosaur and batman it's a lot of fun and uh yeah it, it's that's all you're going to get if you it's a setup issue as well but yeah, there's not really much more to it. It's a very simple comic you can enjoy with your kids and if you're young at heart. And obviously this was the setup comic, as you mentioned. So we don't know exactly how far they're going to take this idea and explore it. Obviously, it is a limited series, but there are worse ways to spend your time reading a comic book than Jurassic League number one. I definitely recommend it. Uh, you know, it's not a super high recommendation, but, you know, it's really solid. It's the best thing that came out of DC this week by far. That is absolutely true. Yeah, uh, going through what I what from DC this past week, I I, I couldn't recommend anything else. I I really couldn't. And yeah, Jurassic League stood out from everything else. The good thing is we didn't need DC comics this week because we had indie comics. We had Nottingham. We had the Kill Lock. We had the Sumerian. We had Frank Frazetta's Death. Uh, what is it? Death Dealer. Death Dealer. Well, who else do we have? We had uh, GI Joe um, mm -hmm. Saturday Morning Adventures. So. Lots of really good indie stuff. If you're an indie comic fan, this was the week for you. Five nice indie comics. If you have any recommendations, definitely put them in the in the comment section. Recommend them out there because we want to have a conversation. We want to discover good comic books. We don't want to waste our time on the bad ones. Now, speaking of discovering good comic books, Drew, your Board of Blood number one campaign on Kickstarter was a tremendous success. I believe everyone has their books now and people have really enjoyed it. Are we getting more Born of Blood? We are getting more Born of Blood. The demand is there, uh, too much demand. So Sean and Murphy, they said, we're launching Born of Blood 2 now. Everything is done now for Born of Blood 2. Joe Corallo and Aaron Sparrow came on board. We we took a, we've taken the razor. We sharpened the razor with these two guys. We've made this issue two just a complete awesome follow-up to issue one, if not better. We're going to see a Giaris again, you know, growing in ways of being a woman now as well as being a badass warrior. And we're going to see a uh, fallout from uh, decisions that were made from issue one. And her father may or may not be not, may not have been making the best decisions from issue one. There's gonna be a lot of twists and turns along the way. This is going to be fantastic. We have great covers lined up from, we got Elias Chatzudis. We got Tim Vigil for issue two, Piper Rudich involved. There's so many big names involved who wanted to jump in on issue two. You do not want to miss the train on this. We are launching on Monday guys, Monday. Very exciting. Now, I got to ask a question that everyone's wondering. You know, you, you mentioned some names in the story or whatever. Are we still getting titties? What's going on here, Drew? You're going to you're gonna get the titties. Oh, yes. 
That's what we're talking You're going to get, yeah. Got the Bill Clinton seal of approval. Shockingly, the other comic book from DC that maybe you could recommend this week would have been Superman, Son of Kal, number 11. But there are some major issues with the story and some of the revelations. It turns out John's boyfriend, Jay, is a villain. If you haven't seen this, you don't know what's going on in Superman, Son of Kal-El. Superman's boyfriend is confirmed a villain. Batman was right, and they still won't admit it. Definitely check that video out.